Hi, I'm Maria and this is NASA Now. Since the late 1950s, spacecraft of all types have been placed in orbit around the Earth. In fact, there are literally thousands of satellites circling our planet that no longer function. These objects are called orbital debris. Our expert today will tell us how NASA, along with the U.S. Space Surveillance Network, monitors each of these objects to avoid catastrophic collisions in space. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. Recently, NASA brought viewers live coverage of the launch of the European Space Agency's third automated transfer vehicle cargo ship. The 13-ton unmanned spacecraft named Eduardo Amaldi was remotely piloted from the control center by engineers in Toulouse, France. The Eduardo Amaldi delivered 7.2 tons of propellant, water, and supplies to the six crew members on board the International Space Station. This is just another example of the international community coming together to develop engineering solutions that further our efforts in space. You may be surprised to hear that space, especially around Earth, is very crowded. Enough so that there has been an agency at NASA called the Orbital Debris Program Office constantly monitoring known objects in orbit 24-7, 365 days a year. Today we are joined by Nicholas Johnson, NASA's chief scientist for orbital debris to explain how his office works with agencies around the world to keep our space highways collision free. Orbital debris is really anything in Earth orbit which no longer serves a functional purpose. There's a, a very large quantity of debris which has accumulated over the past 50 years. We are tracking in the United States with the U.S. Space Surveillance Network more than 22,000 objects currently in Earth orbit at some altitude. Of those 22,000 objects, only 1,000 represent functional spacecraft. So the other 21,000 are all debris. The way we track debris is with a number of different technologies. We have ground-based radars and we have ground-based telescopes. Typically, the radars will concentrate on objects what we call low Earth orbit or below 2,000 kilometers and the optical telescopes will concentrate on the higher altitude. The space station is the most heavily protected vehicle that's ever been launched or assembled in Earth orbit. It can withstand hits of objects on the order of half an inch in diameter. If it's larger than that, the shield simply cannot prevent the particle from going all the way through the shields and into the component we're trying to protect. If the objects are larger, we simply get out of the way. A lot of people think that all debris moves in a sort of general direction, but it turns out that once they're in orbit, because of perturbations, changes in the gravitational field of the Earth and the, the Sun and the Moon, that they actually wind up in a large number of directions. The best way to visualize it is to think of a beehive, an angry beehive, and these objects are actually going in all different directions. For a satellite in low Earth orbit, they're traveling typically five miles per second. But because they're going in different directions, the collision velocity is going to be even higher. And in fact, the average collisional velocity is somewhere like seven or eight miles per second. With a large number of satellites which we put in the orbit over the last half century, a lot of those are coming back at a regularly frequent rate. On average, there's been one known satellite re-entry every day. Most of these small things burn up completely. They never reach the surface of the Earth. But for a typical rocket body or a spacecraft, there will be some components which do survive re-entry. However, because roughly three-fourths of the world is covered in water, the majority of those surviving components will wind up in the water. Uh, those which do not, they may likely come down in very sparsely populated regions. Fortunately, through all these years, no one has ever been hurt and there's never been any significant property damage. But we know that there's always a risk and it's one which we actually try to mitigate. 
Now that you know what NASA does to protect spacecraft from orbital debris, try this classroom activity. Teachers, here's a way for you and your class to learn how engineers protect astronauts from cosmic debris. Look for the Micrometeoroids and Space Debris Activity on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.